So I spent the night here in Southern Utah. I haven't slept a wink. I rolled into here about midnight and I've been up taking photos nonstop. It's about eight o'clock right now and I have a SD card full of Milky Way time lapses, really awesome Milky Way shots, some blue hour compositions, and I wanted to show you what my process is on putting all that together. So let's head back home to Salt Lake and start putting some of those composites together. I'll show you everything that I do to, to put together all the time lapses and, and composites that I got from today. Really excited to see how they turn out and I'm excited for you to see them as well. Okay, so we're back here in Salt Lake City in the office and we're gonna pretend like it hasn't been a decent amount of time since the beginning of this video and right now. So I have all of my photos here on Lightroom. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have a bunch of photos of the Milky Way. I did a full time lapse of the Milky Way. So I have, I don't know, upwards of maybe 200 photos of the Milky Way. And then the night that I was out there, right before the sun came up, I went around and I took a bunch of blue hour photos. So I have all of these images of all these cool different rock structures that we are going to insert the Milky Way into. So I tried as hard as I could to make it so that when I was taking these photos, the um, direction that I was taking them in was the same that the Milky Way actually sits in. So it'll be mostly accurate to, to where the Milky Way would actually sit. I would prefer it to be 100% accurate if I could, um, but this method doesn't always uh, tend to tend to be the most accurate in terms of um, you know geographically where the Milky Way sits in this scene. So and, and maybe that's maybe that's cheating. Maybe that's you know it, there's a lot of different opinions on that. I, I think it's fine, but that's a conversation for another day. So I have all my photos here in Lightroom, and I have picked out uh, 14 Milky Way photos that we're going to stack. And if we go in, if we look at these Milky Way photos that I have. Hold on, sorry, I have to wait for the dang hard drive to load. Okay, so I have my 14 Milky Way photos and I've already gone through and done a, uh, a rough edit on them. And as you can see, I've, it's kind of a, it's kind of crunchy edit. So I've really boosted the contrast. I've really, I've pushed the whites quite a bit and I've kind of tried to make some of the colors in the Milky Way pop out. You know, like I meant, it's kind of a crunchy, very noisy, kind of messy image. I wouldn't normally put out something like this, but this is just kind of a starting point for your Milky Way photos. So you wanna be able to pull out as much detail as you can and then we're gonna take this into Photoshop and we're gonna do what's called a noise reduction stack. So basically we're gonna take all 14 of these Milky Way photos, we're going to stack them on top of each other and then Lightroom is gonna look through and it's gonna pull out all the noise and it's gonna pull out some of the stars with it as well, make it just a much cleaner image and it's gonna make the Milky Way pop out that much more. And once we've done that noise reduction stack, we're gonna take our blue hour foreground photo and we're gonna put the Milky Way into that photo. Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, all of our Milky Way photos. So I'm gonna select one through 14 here, just holding down shift and clicking. And then I'm gonna come up here to photo in Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna drop down to edit in and I'm going to open as layers in Photoshop. And this is gonna take a second just to load everything up into Photoshop. So we're going to move over to our Photoshop tab and it's going to start dropping in all of our uh, Milky Way photos right here on the right side. Okay, so now we have all of our Milky Way photos set up here in layers in Photoshop. Now the first thing we're gonna wanna do is align all of our Milky Way photos together. So all of these photos were taken probably a minute after each other and in that amount of time, that Milky Way is moving across the sky. So in all of these photos, the Milky Way is not always in the exact same position. So we want to align all those and stack them so that they are. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is come down here to our first image and we're going to click a the layer mask icon down here at the bottom. It's the little square with the circle in the middle of it. So it's gonna put a layer mask over that first image. And now we're going to click our brush tool, which I'm already in. Make sure that our opacity is to 100%, flow is to 100%, and then I like to take the, the hardness of this up to about probably 75. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to set our brush to black and then we're going to paint out the foreground here. And if you click your forward slash or backslash on the right side of your keyboard, it'll bring up a red overlay so you can actually see what you're masking and what you're, what, what you're not masking. So we're going to just, whoops, we don't want to do that. We don't want to undo what we've done. So 
We're gonna come through and mask out our foreground. Doesn't have to be perfect, it can be pretty rough. And that is, that is pretty good right there. All we're doing is telling Photoshop when we stack this that we want it to stack the sky. We don't want it to stack the foreground. So we're essentially de temporarily deleting the foreground so that when it does its alignment, it'll only align the sky. So we're gonna come over here to the right side of the screen and we're going to hit Option on the Mac or Alt if you're using Windows. And we're going to hold Option, click, and then drag down to the next layer below it. And we're gonna do that for all of the layers. Remember that this process is a little time consuming. It's very worth it in the end, but it is a little time consuming nonetheless. Okay, so we have everything masked out. So now we're gonna select all of our layers. So we're gonna shift and click and make sure that all of our layers here in the layer panel are selected. Maybe just bring that up a little bit, we can see more of what's going on. And then we'll come over here to our edit tab and then come down to auto align layers. And then you're gonna to wanna to hit auto. Hit okay, let it do its thing. Might take a second. What are you doing, buddy? Since the last time we spoke, I inherited a dog. His name's Duke. Okay, so we now have everything stacked here. So now we're gonna go through and just delete those layer masks. And then one by one, again, a little tedious. And I'm doing this on a trackpad. So, I guess I could use a mouse, it's right next to me, or the, uh, the pen that I paid money for. But, Nope, we're just using the trackpad. Okay, so we have everything aligned here. Whoa. So now if you go through and you actually unclick all of the different layers, you'll notice that they're all sitting right on top of each other. Okay, so now that we have all of our images aligned, I am going to select all of our layers over here, and we're going to hit Control, or essentially right click, if you're using a, a Windows and not a Mac, hit Control, and come down here to convert to smart object. And this is gonna take a little bit of time just cause we have 14 photos here. So it's trying to process that. It did it really fast. <laughs> okay, so now we have our combined smart object. So now we're gonna come up here to layer. We're gonna come down to smart objects. We're gonna go to stack mode. We're going to hit median. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to look at your photo and it's going to look at all the little all the little pixels and it's gonna pull out all the noise. So it should leave us with a pretty clean Milky Way image. Okay, so there we go. So we have our starting point for our noise reduced Milky Way photo. So it's not perfect yet though, but as you can see, it's looking pretty good. So we still have a little bit of work we can do here. Um, don't worry about the blurred foreground. We're gonna swap out the foreground anyways, but everything else is looking pretty dang good so far. So now let's take our image. We're gonna come up here to select. We're going to drop down to color range. And now we want to make sure that we have our highlights selected. So essentially what this is going to do is we're going to pull out a little bit more of those stars and just make it more of a Milky Way focused uh, image. You don't have to do this. What this is really just going to do is pull out some of the stars on the side of your Milky Way. So like I said, this is not something you have to do. I am going to show you how to do it just because a lot of people who do astrophotography like to do this just so they can accentuate that Milky Way just a little bit more. So like I said, this is totally optional from here and you know if you want to have a sky that's, that's full of stars then that's totally up to you. But so we're going to look at our color range here. We want to make sure that we have our highlights selected and then I like to have my fuzziness kind of set around uh, 70, 74, 75 kind of in here. You don't want to... Uh, you don't want to have it at 100% and you also don't want to select nothing. So about 70, 100%, about 75-ish percent. And then you also don't want to blow everything out on your range. So just under 200 is kind of where I like to keep that range at. We'll hit OK. So that's going to select a bunch of our stars and then we're gonna go back into select. We're gonna hit modify. And we're gonna come down to expand. And we're gonna expand by three pixels. This is essentially just going to 
I kind of broaden that area that we're selecting. So we're gonna hit okay. As you can see, we have now selected a bunch more stars. Okay, now finally, what we wanna do is we basically just wanna take out those stars that we've selected. So we're going to come up here to our filter tab, drop down to other, hit minimum, and we're gonna leave this anywhere from 0.5 to about 0.8. I have 0.5 selected, that's just what's worked for me on this photo. So we're gonna leave it at 0.5, and then we're gonna hit okay. And there we go, we've got a nice, clean Milky Way photo. So I love how this looks. Like I said, that final step, you don't totally have to do. That is totally optional, that is kind of a style preference. Um, but I like to do that just because that accentuates the Milky Way just a little bit more. It does leave your stars in, so you're not losing all your stars. It just makes what I feel like is maybe a cooler Milky Way photo, but totally optional. So there we have our final Milky Way photo. Now what we want to do is we want to drop in that blue hour foreground photo so that we can put our Milky Way photo into that photo. So I'm going to come back here to Lightroom and select that photo. Okay, so we have our blue hour photo right here. I've already done a little bit of adjustment to this. Uh, so we'll show you the before. Essentially what I did was I just, I cooled everything down. You wanna make sure your blue hour photo, it kind of resembles more of a nighttime feel. So that's what I did with this. I took this a little later than I normally would have. Um, it was pretty close to sunset as you can tell by the clouds in the background. And normally I wouldn't have done this, but this photo actually lines up pretty nicely with where the Milky Way actually is set. So, if you look right here where this little gap is, the Milky Way in that, that photo that we just processed actually sits about right here. So it actually works out pretty nice, which, which I love. I, I love accuracy in, in landscape photos. Okay, so after we've made all of our adjustments on this blue hour photo, I'm gonna come up here to photo, drop down to edit in, and hit, and hit edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. And then that is going to open it up in our Adobe application. I'm going to unlock our background layer, and then I'm just going to hit Command C or Control C if you're on Windows, and then we will come back over to our Milky Way photo, and we will hit Command or Control V to paste. And now we have our blue hour photo on top of our Milky Way photo. So now I wanna make sure that um, we are um, set at the same dimensions as that Milky Way photo. So we'll hit, so I hit Control T and then expand the, uh, the photo so that it fits within my, my canvas in Photoshop. And then there we go. So we have that in there. So now what I wanna do is just delete the sky in this photo, which is really simple. So what I wanna do is make sure we have our foreground layer selected right here. We'll come up to select. We're going to just hit select sky. Very, very simple. We'll let it do its thing. And now that we have our sky selected, you see we have our marching ants around the sky. We're gonna come back up to select. Hit select and mask. Come down here to output. I like to do output layer mask. Uh, there's a couple different options. I just, I always do layer mask because it just works the best to me. And then we'll hit okay. Okay, so as you can see, it did it backwards. So it masked out our foreground and kept the sky. So one thing to remember with your layer masks is white reveals and black conceals. So anything that's in black on your layer mask here is going to be hidden from your image and anything that's white is going to show. So all we're gonna do on this is just hit Command or if you're on Windows, Control I and that's going to invert it. Okay, so now we have our Milky Way in the sky. Now we just have to make it so this looks believable because this right here doesn't look believable at all. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to move our Milky Way up into position. Uh, just this is okay. It says the smart filters will be will be applied, will be turned off, but it's it's fine. We're gonna move this up. As you can see, we have a very we we almost match the ridge line right here. So we're going to just match that as best we can, and we'll turn it a little bit. It's kind of the best we're gonna be able to do right there which I like, I, I think I'm okay with that. Okay, we'll hit enter. And 
Now we have our Milky Way in a appropriate position in the sky. So there we have it. So we have our Milky Way inserted into our blue hour photo. Now next thing that I would do is I would go through and I would do a bunch of dodging and burning and add a little bit of maybe mistiness there. I would do a little bit more editing and processing on the sky, kind of bring out some of those colors a little bit more and we would have a photo that looks like this. And I'll show you that on the screen right now. But that's up to you how far you go through an edit. I, with this particular image, did not go super heavy on the edit. I did some light dodging and burning on the foreground, uh, pulled out some more of the colors in the sky, and then I did what's called an Orton effect, just to give it a little bit of a glow. And I really love how it turned out. So I, this is one of my favorites from the night. I really like the composition. I really like how, how the rocks kind of form a little, somewhat of a frame on the bottom. I think this is just a really clean Milky Way photo. And yeah, it's one of my favorites from the night. So that's gonna be it for this video. Subscribe, like, comment. Let me know if you have any questions. We're gonna do, we're gonna do more Milky Way tutorials in the future. So we're gonna do one on, on a Milky Way time-lapse, for example. And I think it'll be really cool. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.